Hi everyone, this is an update on the Open Research Infrastructure Programs at Lyricist. Many of you are familiar with our National ORCID Consortium, which is called the ORCID US Community. We also have a data site consortium for US institutions. And last but not least, we have our IRIS US Community Program, which is our newest one, and so I'll start by talking about that one. IRIS stands for Institutional Repository Us Usage Statistics, and it's a service that's based at JISC in the UK. And only just within the last few years, US institutions can use the IRIS service through Lyricis and the IRIS US program. So IRIS pro provides platform level um, stats as well as item level. So you can look at aggregates or individual items and you can see views and downloads and um, all of the stats can be made publicly visible. The image that you're seeing on this slide is an example of the iris widget which can be displayed in the user interface of your repository for example. IRIS produces counter-conformant statistics. So counter is an international standard that's used by publishers and vendors that are supplying subscription-based content to libraries. And counter basically ensures that usage numbers are um, accurate and reliable. So it filters out bots and web crawlers and kind of stand... <clears throat> standardizes the data so that it can be compared. Um, so now you could compare your usage of your IR materials to your subscription content and have more of a kind of aligned assessment across library resources. Um, this is an example from the University of Michigan. They're using IRIS with three different repositories on campus. We had them present a case study recently along with MIT. But what this slide is illustrating is that you can actually get usage stats for individual authors based on the presence of their ORCID ID in your repository metadata. So in any cases where you need to gather information to help faculty members show what they've been up to and their impact, so to speak, this could be a great tool for that. Um, another example that's illustrated nicely from the University of Michigan here is that any repository that's using IRIS, um, the stats are comparable within the IRIS portal. So anyone can go online and access the IRIS statistics. They're entirely open. Um, and comparable. So what you're seeing here is a top 20 list of the most downloaded items across all repositories that are using IRIS. And you can see that University of Michigan falls in second place here for the time period next to Oxford and followed by Cambridge. And the red color also represents Michigan. So you can see they actually have several items that are falling in the top 20. So this really just kind of helps to illustrate or tell somewhat of a story um, confirming, you know, the usage of these local materials. The only issue with this right now is that um, most of the institutions that are using IRIS are actually in the UK. In the US, there's a very small number of institutions. So like, like any open infrastructure, the more organizations using it, the more helpful it can be for everyone. Um, it would be probably more helpful for Michigan to see where they fall in the grand scheme of things compared to other US institutions and peers. So what are you using for your IR stats? You might wanna consider IRIS. Looking at our ORCID US community program, this is a consortium of over 200 nonprofit organizations that are ORCID members in the US. Lyricis has been leading this since 2018 in a partnership with the Big Ten, Gwila, and Neural. And any nonprofit in the US can join this program and become an ORCID member. A little refresher on ORCID, you've got your ORCID ID, which is the unique persistent identifier that's free for researchers to use and will help distinguish them throughout their career. 
Every ORCID ID links to an ORCID record where information is stored similar to what you would see on a CV or resume, things like affiliations and research activity. And then we've also got uh, the ORCID API or application programming interface, which facilitates organizations, software systems, vendors, platforms, being able to connect and uh, transfer data between the local system and individuals' ORCID records. And this has been coming up a lot lately because ORCID is heavily referenced in a memo called the National Security Presidential Memo 33 or NSPM 33, which talks about research security and national security when it comes to research and federally funded research. So as of right now, all of the federal funding agencies are required to come up with policies related to researchers having ORCID IDs. And so they're in the process of doing that. They're coming up with their policies. Some of them might require ORCID. Some of them might make ORCID optional. We just don't know right now, so we're waiting. But it's good to know that some Agencies like the NIH, for example, already require ORCID for certain types of grants, and I think that's just the direction that things are going. So the sooner everyone can get on board with ORCID, the sooner your researchers can be in compliance and be ready to go for any potential policies that come out. Regardless of what the policies are, though, for example, anyone right now applying for funding from NIH or NSF can save a lot of time by using their ORCID data to populate their science CV biosketch, for example. And that's what you're seeing illustrated on the slide here on the right. Um, so again, I think we're just going to continue seeing more of this kind of thing. In terms of how to prepare as an institution for any potential ORCID-related policies, I think a really good first step is to try to assess your current level of ORCID adoption at your institution. We have a lot of resources for helping to do this um, at the ORCID US community, so definitely um, reach out. Um, one of the examples is some data visualization resources we have that look at um, publication data from ORCID records, co-author information from DOI metadata, and then maps all of that out. So what you're seeing here is um, a map of all of the researchers that have co-authored publications with researchers from Caltech, for example. Um, so if you're interested in doing an investigation like this or seeing a visualization like this for your institution, let us know. Um, also, any any time you can educate your researchers about ORCID is a good time. It's never too early or too late. Any time you can talk to other internal stakeholders. So if you're in the library talking to people in the research office and sponsored programs, become an institutional ORCID member if you're not already. And once you're a member, use the ORCID API in your in your local systems. You can read data from your researchers' ORCID records. You can help them by writing data to their ORCID records that they can then use down the line when they go to apply for funding. So it's just a good idea in general. Um, when you're thinking about using that ORCID API, know that there's a growing number of software systems that are integrated with ORCID or ORCID enabled, and we're hoping to see more of this. Right now, I'm working on a a grant from the ORCID Global Participation Fund to improve the ORCID functionality in DSpace version 7.6 and up, for example. So there are always um, updates and improvements happening along these lines. If you want to stay in the loop and stay up to date with new things as they come out related to ORCID in the U.S., Go to our website, it's orchidus.lyricist.org, and click the button to subscribe to the Orchid US listserv. And that's probably the best way to stay up to date with all this, especially as we continue to wait for all the federal funding agencies to come out with their Orchid policies. And last but not least, we also have our data site consortium. Um, this is another one that any nonprofit in the US can join. Um, especially if you're new to data site or, or only planning on creating a small number of DOIs, but 
essentially when joining this program, you would be able to assign DOIs to your own local research and scholarly materials. Um, another um, White House memo, the, the OSTP public access memo has a whole paragraph about digital persistent identifiers, things like ORCID, like DOIs, making it very clear that this is a best practice that needs to be followed. Not only should federally funded research be publicly uh, available, it should also be correctly linked together with persistent identifiers. Um, and of course, this helps with FAIR and the FAIR principles, which are findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable, just basically making sure that all of the research and outputs that are out there are FAIR, essentially. Um, and Datacite is more about just DOIs. If you haven't explored Datacite Commons, for example, this is another illustration of how having different persistent identifiers kind of connected and linked together in the metadata of the other identifiers can really help us put together a better um, picture, help us put the puzzle pieces together in terms of understanding research activity across the, the landscape. Um, Datacite also has an API. Um, Datacite metadata is open and gets harvested and indexed into many different services. Um, and they're also looking at metrics, things like citations and views and, and things like that. Um, I do want to draw attention to a recent um, undertaking led by Datacite, which is called the Global Data Citation Corpus. And it's a, kind of like a grant funded project to get a better understanding of, for data sets at least, where and how they're being used and cited. Um, and so this is really exciting because in addition to just usage stats like item views and downloads, things like this will enable us to, to have a better uh, idea of how and where our items like data sets are being used once they're viewed and downloaded. Um, so just to wrap up, we've got ORCID to identify researchers and gather and analyze research activity, data site DOIs to help make works more fair, and IRIS to get a better understanding of usage for assessment and benchmarking. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to email me. I would love to hear from you. It's Sheila.Rabin at lyricist.org. Thank you.